Okay, uh, we're at the Heinemann Settlement School here on uh, 51 Center Street in Heinemann, Kentucky. Uh, here is a uh, brochure here. Now, this, uh, this particular school was started in 1899. It was a Knott County local. Uncle Solomon Everidge asked uh, May Stone and Catherine Petit, P-E-T-I-T, -E to fund a school for his, great, for his grands and his great-grandchildren. So the Hyman Settlement School was founded in 1902. The Hyman Settlement School becomes Knott County's first official high school. Uh, this goes on to be an approved school for the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. And the settlement uh, begins extension education program in remote county schools. This is about as remote area as you can get in America, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Colorado might have something on this, but when you're looking around this area here, uh, you're talking about very, very limited space. You got one mountain over here, and you got one ridge over here, and you probably got a total area of about maybe 200 yards, maybe 400 yards max across here. And this school probably was founded. I, I was uh, just talking to the, the people here. They were they're having a meeting, so they didn't have a lot of time to talk to me about this. But this, uh, this school starts with the education of people, possibly immigrants and what have you, to uh, make a better life for themselves. So the first uh, Appalachian Writers Workshop is uh, set up here. Let's put this on hold, and there's a, peop a couple of people out here that they don't might be able to talk to here. So here we go right now. But hey, so we're, we're at Heinemann settlement school and you guys are you guys are sitting here having a lunch break uh, I asked the guys over there if they could give me a, a rundown on it but they they weren't but from what I understand this is uh, part of the Appalachian that was uh, had a lot of immigrants in it that didn't didn't know how to write and read and is that how that works out it used to be well yeah like in the 1900s like uh, uh, what like almost 120 years ago it was like that it was very very, um, very rural, rural. Very, rural pr very primitive. 1902, 1902, yeah. So, were there a lot of coal mines around here in 1902? Yeah. Now, I, I read a story about uh, a coal miner's a coal miner's daughter, or actually a, a immigrant that came from Poland that was in the coal mines, and how she was 13 and uh, <coughs> she was she got married and to a 26 year old coal miner who just died about who died eight months later. But you know, she knew how to do a lot of stuff around here. Um, so is this this is we're looking at about the same kind of an area here, right? Uh, with that's why this school started. Yeah. So how long, sir? Have you, how long have you been with this uh, this organization? Thirty-five years. Thirty-five years. Yeah. What has it done recently for for the people around here? Well, we have a dyslexia program. Uh huh. And they used to give out scholarships for kids who want to go to college. I'm not sure if that's too well or not. What has the has the COVID dampened that whole thing? As far as that goes, we didn't have in school um, tutoring. We have five weeks of it. Uh huh. They did it virtual. So we didn't have the kids to come and dorm here. Uh huh. So that, that hindered that. That hindered that. Yeah. Did that take away a lot of your funding and everything for your school? I don't think so. I think we're still funding. So you guys still have private? Is it private funding? Yeah. It, yes. Okay. Okay. No state funding. No state funding whatsoever. Oh, that's interesting. Is the coal mining industry still up and going around here? It's about gone. It's about gone. Yeah, they shut down a lot of uh, the coal mines. Uh -huh. um, yeah, a lot. The trucks with that would haul. My husband, he's a mechanic at Cummins and Hazard. Uh -huh. And uh, they work on school buses mostly now instead of the trucks. So, was it hurt everybody, the coal mining being shut down around here? Well, the coal mining being shut down started even before the COVID. It's In the Obama administration, yeah. he wanted to shut the coal mining that down. Destroyed, that destroyed us. So I've got a question. How are the winters like for, for most folk around here? Are they hard winters out here? It varies. Does it? It used to be worse when I was smaller than winters. Sometimes uh -huh. I've seen it 70 degrees in January. So. 
flowers. I remember once seeing a rose bloom in January. In January? That's not happening. That's, that's not. That's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal. When you were a child, it was different. Yeah, it was the whole months of December. Snow, no school. Uh huh. Snow on the ground. So yeah. Wow. We didn't go to school for months. Settlement is also trying to get people to grow their own food. They're starting that. So, the Grow Your Own Food program is going on. Yeah, Grow Appalachia. And that's encouraged by the state or the local community? It's local. Because they don't want people to starve. Well, you want to be self-efficient. You don't have to rely on it. How about the price of meat these days? Has it gone up? Has it? I get that. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of have a, a diet that's more seven-day Adventist in some ways, you know. I eat a lot of nuts and berries and, and oatmeal and stuff like that. You know, I have a blender in the truck, so I, I do that. So I stay away from the road food because I know that that's not good, you know. Um, but I have noticed the price uh, in California, three bucks a pound, I guess, for hamburger or whatever. Uh, you know, I normally eat a steak or something, and it's about, I guess it was about $10, $12 a pound. I don't know. But uh, out here, I would think it, well, I don't know. I'm, what I've noticed about out here is, is that it's really closed in. I mean, it's as closed in as any place I've ever been in America. Because, I mean, you've got, what, like 400 yards between on flat ground, and then the rest <laughs> of it's just trees, right? Yeah. You know? I'm, yeah, you got long strips of, of land, bottom land that's by the river, and people are people are living off the river. Okay, but that's it. And there's not much else, and then you've got this triple canopy forest here that's amazing. Beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. I'm yeah. Life and I still see the beauty in it every day. It is truly amazing. I maybe other Americans might differ, but as we're talking, this rain is coming down, and it's just it's so green, it's so lush here. You know, and um, I am so fascinated by how we Americans live, how we adjust to our our uh, everything that we have, a climate and what have you. Um, my mother lives in Meadview, Arizona. There's not any green there whatsoever. It's right. There's hardly any soil there. It's just rock. Yeah. You know, and there's lots of cactus, and there's very little water. They would be very happy to have all this water right now. You know what I mean? Um, but this is almost too much in some ways when you're talking about water because you've got a lot of mold issues out here and stuff like that. Yeah. But all in all, though, okay, I'm not, I'm not noticing you guys wearing masks. Okay, so are you guys afraid of the COVID? Well, if I go in the stores, I wear them, but we're with one another every day. So. Are you afraid of the COVID? How about you, ma'am? Do you guys know I'm anybody that's I, died? I'm glad I didn't know that it could be bad. I have one of the three things like, you know. Do you? So you're afraid of comorbidity? Maybe you'll get hit with pneumonia or something. Yeah, that's what, you know, you start with one illness and you end up with yeah. the, something like that. When I was in Hazard, I, I've got the paper over there and 12 people died. Uh, that last week, but none of them were COVID. They just died, you know. Um, and I haven't talked. And then there's a there's an article in that paper about the jail, and the jail has gone down from 240 inmates to 146 inmates. Okay, and they haven't had one COVID outbreak in the whole time uh, that the jail has. Then this whole thing has been. Now, I've been across the country, 5,000 miles. And I've known maybe of two COVID-related deaths out of all the people that I've, I've interviewed. And my brother had COVID, and he got and he's driving truck today. Um, so my take on it is people are hedging their bets. My, my, as well wear a mask anyway, you know. But then why are they having us wear masks, you guys? when masks don't do anything to stop the virus. Do you guys have any idea that, any clue as to, I mean, 
What has really happened in this community in the last six months? Has, have, have people gotten richer or poorer? Have they gotten sicker? Or what are you guys seeing? We see a big change. So no change. So I, I was up there, just up up the street there at the at the community for well being for the people that do too many drugs, right? They're in there, and they said the same thing that there was no change. Okay, I can't feel That's awesome to hear, in a way, <laughs> except for the fact that they've dropped the coal mining and they've dropped and the, and the town isn't as vibrant as it used to be. I'd like to see America come back and be that way again. Uh, yeah. You, you think that there's been a big separation in America? There's been a falling away for a long time. And what kind of falling away do you think? It's the political thing that's separating America. So we've got one side red, one side blue. It's divided right down the middle. Divided right down the middle. Are you guys red or blue? Yeah, I'm blue. You're blue? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm neutral because I'm forever who I think the best, but when you don't have much of an option, so what do you do? I'm apolitical myself. Um, I'm more of an anthropologist, so I, I want to get the story. Why why are you backing the blue side? Well, I just feel like more for the poor people. Okay. Yeah. And and freedom. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I would totally respect your opinion. They want to disagree and argue over every little thing. What's that, ma'am? Disagree just to disagree. Just to create a conflict. Yeah. I see. Now, how do you stand on that? Do you feel the same way? Yeah. I mean, I don't. There will never be an answer in division. The people come together. I don't feel. Our country will get back to the way it was. You think that's that, all right to have a matter of difference, right? But with hatred, it's just going down farther. Do you guys think that if this town all of a sudden were to have some real big crisis, got cut off and isolated, do you think that this community would pull together? Yeah. Do you? I would think it would. Yes. I think that's what it would take to bring the country back together. Uh huh. Well, this has been a great interview. Let me put this on hold and we'll talk some more. <laughs> but it's, I've pretty much reached the end of where I want to be at. So uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, 12 Soul Out. Moving on soon enough. All right. Bye.